With God, there is always more. More love, more life, more freedom. Welcome to Zoe's Exploring More with Michael Thompson. C.S. Lewis once wrote, Our Heavenly Father has provided many delightful ends for us along our journey, but He takes great care to see that we do not mistake any of them for home. Join me and the team as we explore the kingdom together, discovering the deep truths and offering encouragement for the journey. There is always more. Welcome, friends and allies, to the Exploring More podcast. I'm Michael Thompson. I'm with my friends S.J. and Jeff Andreessen, and our uh, chief explorer, director of exploration for Zoe, uh, good friend who you've gotten to know a little bit through the last podcast, and now we're into our session two on exploration. And just as a bit of review, we talked about the importance of our faith being in exploration, our Christian journey. Exploration of the heart. Of the heart, story, desires matter, all these things. We talked about ingredients last session, about courage being just so critical. The story is a hard one that we find ourselves yeah, in. thank you. In fallenness and courage is required, overcoming, stepping out and stepping with God into the unknown. And like I said last session, I've never been here before. Never been here before. Yeah. And so this is exploration. This is frontier. And the things that we've misinterpreted about our past can actually be better understood. There's an invitation to go back and see the hand of God on our lives and then bring that forward and not quite so much of a time lapse, right? right. You don't have to wait 30 years to see some of the good that God was up to, but rather looking through the windshield and not the rear view mirror going, oh my gosh, he has been moving me in a direction of destiny, of goodness, of glory. And he's redeeming things that happened to me that weren't good. Right. Some of them are my choices. Some of them are other people's choices. And I think that's where the overcoming becomes critical. And then in real time, you know, stepping in with courage, resolve was a word that you brought up, SJ, last mm -hmm. time. Just recently I heard there's a critical couple seconds when you have that thought of comfort or that thought of stepping back into convenience. Oh, when you're on the field at Bannockburn, right? Yeah. I mean, and... and Engage, and right? Wallace says, dying in your beds a year from now, right? Yeah. That whole quote. Yeah. As much as I love that, here's the one I thought of just recently. Okay. So this morning, right, there's a donut, and I have a couple seconds to overrule that, actually, and say... Wait, there's donuts here? No. <laughs> There's a couple seconds to overrule that right. and, and say, no, no, we're not doing that. And then this little voice argues with me. Mm -hmm. It's just one, you know, and yeah. you can, and you you can take a walk. Like, you yesterday. can take a walk later. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, you know. Yeah, it's not just you that has that voice, bro. <laughs> yeah. There's there's just such an interesting dynamic as we look at adventure and exploration. I mean, even seeing that, Jeff, to see that the voices that are playing in my head are coming at me or are at work, I want to be more present to those. I want to actually see what I'm thinking. And I want to get to an observation space where I can determine what the heck's going on right now. You know, mm -hmm. the other day I was doing some research for the new book, SJ, and which requires, you know, some clicking and some Googling and stuff like that. Well, I mean, dang, on the side of my computer comes up these ads for lingerie that quick. And I'm I've, sure got, I've, got a a I've got a decision to make in a second. Mm -hmm. And it is get out of there, find somewhere else. That would not be in my best interest. It would not be good for me, for Robin, for our family, for our marriage. And so, wait, all that, and you got to decide in a couple seconds? Yeah. I think of Pilgrim's Progress and the John Bunyan classic. I mean, he is having to navigate a great word for exploration through pitfalls and trials and lures. And you don't know that they're there until you know that yeah. it is one you're and, and, and what it's going to cost you. And how do I get out of there? You know, so exploration is really a critical kingdom idea, kingdom concept for the kind of life that we actually so are being equipped for. What you're talking about is another ingredient. So we had courage, we had resolve, as you said. So yep. the, the, the word to describe, I think, what you're trying to communicate is vigilance. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the definition of vigilance, the action or state of keeping careful watch 
for possible danger or difficulty. Yeah, my synonym is discernment. I thought you were going to say discernment. Discernment's same word, great, yeah. same idea. Discernment, Paying vigilance. attention. Right, staying awake. From the last podcast, I remember, if you're right that this is a dangerous story, then you do need your heart and mind on a swivel. Oh, yeah. You have got to be paying attention to what's going on and what's coming at you and what might be coming up in you. Because part of this exploration is seeing what God's doing in your life, and that is growing you up to be who you truly are. And if we've all been compromised at some point in our stories, then he's going to show us those spaces and invite us to something more. So yeah, it was big, a lot of big fun. concepts, big, huge ideas. Getting together and talking about some of our stories, especially from our childhood, as from a listener standpoint of view, it's not that we think our stories are that important, but we thought if we share some of our stories, God would begin to speak to you about your story. Oh, uh, that, we have that, found that, that to be true r- over r- and over r- again. R- right, yeah. right. So yeah. as you're telling your story, sure, because uh, it's happened to us I'm, too. I'm remembering my my mm-hmm. own story, and this mm-hmm. is one of the ways that God comes into our stories. And one of our experiences last night was phenomenal. We just had this table set with 10 of us at dinner, and we all came in from all places around the world to this table, (laughs) and we started telling adventure stories, war stories. It was the church in action. Mm. The Lord set a table in the presence of our enemies. For two hours, we got a reprieve, and we were uplifted, and we laughed, and we told I was going to say, most of it was comedy. <laughs> it, it was 80%. 80%. It turned that way. Isn't that yeah. the way that I believe God would set the table in the presence of our enemies, that there's things we are laughing about sure. in the presence of our enemies, that there's things that we're discovering and enjoying, and here the table is in the spiritual realm. Here we are as God's chosen some of his favorites, we'll say, just like you are, listeners. You're one of his favorites, I promise. And we're talking about tales of adventure. We're talking about things that we were experiencing out with one another, with our family. And they were some funny stories. And to enjoy, to just simply be enjoyed and enjoy the person sharing. I mean, these are a beautiful byproduct of exploration. Yes. Tell me a story. What did you see? What happened to you? out there that last the week, beautiful byproduct. the week before. Yeah. And, but if you don't have that circle or that table or you know that fire, that space to then download your stories, I think you end up living anonymously. And that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. I'm learning the way of the Father by listening to your stories. And it's not coming to me through lecture form, but through story. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I loved it. And we need to bring some of those to the podcast. Okay. All right. This is a podcast about <laughs> Welcome to the Jeff more. Andreessen Exploring More <laughs> podcast. <laughs> I can Michael feel Thompson, some interviews coming host. on. That's uh, right. Apparently, <laughs> you just took a trip. Tell us a little bit about your adventure. Yeah, Rob and I had the privilege, Jeff, of going to London, to the UK, and it was kind of multifaceted. It really started with the idea that Abby, our youngest, who's a rising junior in college, she was on an internship that put her there. And so, yeah, if your kid's there, you're kind of thinking, well, yeah, we probably ought to go and make sure it's safe and good. And Kids love parental visits. That's right. right? Yeah. So, so she had a month out there, and on the end of her time is when Rob and I then went out and yeah, it was inconvenient travel and time zones and all kinds of things that you have to do when you're going to pick up and move and head somewhere. But so much fun. Even the travel oh, out even that had be. its adventure. Absolutely. And the people that you met and yeah. how you were treated. Yeah. All kinds of things. We ran into a, a flight attendant that Robin and her did that exchange. Like, wait a minute, you look familiar. Well, they ended up back in University of North Carolina together. They were in the same sorority and it was just this oh my gosh, you know, how have you been? It's been 30 years, you know, how have you been and what's going on? So they caught up on story. The benefit for me was this flight attendant saying, I'm going to take care of you, you know, kind of just telling us across the, uh, the and she aisle. she took that, care of you. Oh yeah, man. Let's put a plug in here for American Airlines. It's <laughs> yes. probably the only good advertising we've got this Exploring uh, this more, summer. sponsored by American, American Airlines. Airlines. Yeah. So from the get-go, there was just, just incredible things that God had in store for us. It was a wonderful time with Abby. Abby had actually arranged for these first days. So the plan was she was going to stay there for three, almost four more days. And then she was flying out and Rob and I were going to stay for a few more. And what we ended up connecting on that was there was Heart of a Warrior readers that we knew in the UK. So we put an invitation to sit down at a pub and have a conversation, just an open invitation. Well, we had 11 guys show up. 
And it was phenomenal just to talk about the Heart of a Warrior book, what's been going on in their lives. Many of them ran some heart allies to begin with. Wild at what heart. was your perspective about where they are in this journey? A lot of them were younger. Uh, majority of them, six, seven of them were younger. But yeah, my perspective, they were the hungry and thirsty. Did they ask good questions? It was a big conversation. We went around the table and everybody shared just five minutes is all you could handle because there's 11 of us. Right. So, you know, mm -hmm. five minutes and we kept some time just to keep it moving. But your story, what happened to you? What were some of the eventful things in the last 10, 15, 20 years that you would say, this is where God began to move me in another direction? And so those were precious. And then the next question was around the table was, so where are you now? destination yeah. points, like waypoints. I mean, where were you yeah. in the last decade or so? And where's God have you now? What are some of the things that seem to be on the front burner? And yeah, they were all over the place. There was trials going on with some of the guys in their marriages and families and work. You know, that seems to be a consistent challenge within the masculine journey where, you know, men's strength is invited and tested. So they were talking about that. And then there was recovery. There was restoration and recovery were themes. So here's trials and challenges. And then there's this other chapter that was pretty consistent with another group of men about, yeah, what God's healing and restoring in their lives, old stuff falling off and, you know, new coming in. And that was all over the board. I mean, some of it about recovering boyhood and some of it stepping into the battle against the enemy. So that was a great conversation. And then there was another night amongst all the tourist visits and different things that Rob and I enjoyed. But there was another night where five men that I had the privilege of connecting with, we had some ceremony for one of the men who was transitioning into this next decade of the 40s, into his 40s. He has two little girls, love him and his life and what he's doing. But he came over from the UK to one of our Heart of Aware weekends. And if I was going to be there for Abby, it was easy to call my friend Rob and say, hey, let's enter into this chapter of your life and validate you and initiate you and some things. So he grabbed some friends. A couple of them came to that night at the pub. So a couple nights later, we had about four hours of speaking into his life and sharing with him how we saw him in the kingdom and inviting him to the next chapter. And it was Think about the goodness holy. of the Father bringing no. you all the way across the ocean. Talk to about do an that adventure for him. for him. Yes. He was overwhelmed. I was overwhelmed. These guys, it was yeah. just so holy and good to be in that circle. Yeah. You didn't want it to end. You know, you just didn't. What an unbelievable experience to have your daughter hosting you and guiding you in a country yeah. you've never been before. We had I'm a great sure Rob time. Love that. If you've ever been into London or ever are going to go, you know, you got your train pass, your bus pass. And Mind the a, gap. Oh yeah. It's so much movement going on, but we had wonderful times and meals and conversation with Abby Two highlights of the tourist part, Jeff, with Robin. One was we took a trip out to Downton Abbey oh, I and, and, I'm and jealous. High Clare Castle. It was a show that we watched and to step really on set, even though it's not a set built yeah. by a production, this house is real and to tour it and to explore it, to stand where they shot these scenes. And we just had a great day. We did that with Abby. And then another day we hit what was called the Kew Gardens uh, near the Richmond a side part of London, and it was phenomenal. I've never seen gardens, never, never like this. It reminded me of stepping into something Disney, you know, one of their parks, but there were no rides. All the way that Disney kind of does their landscaping and all of that, multiply that and just put hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of yards of it. Yeah. And we were in a garden that represented the world. I'd never seen anything like it the species that they had. It was just a horticultural exploration that I wasn't prepared for, and it was phenomenal. That's the heart phenomenal. of exploration right there. Yeah. I saw something I'd never seen before. seen before. It was a phenomenal time. We had a great time. SJ, I was so impressed with your story of going to Philadelphia and <laughs> what you learned there <laughs> yeah. in, in the way of exploration. Yeah. Uh, would you mind sharing that with sure, us? Sure, yeah. So just as a precursor to that, Sherry and I a couple years ago, we found an old camper, a travel trailer built in 1978, which is, you know, it's hard to say that that's an antique now, <laughs> considering that was part of a, a year of my childhood. 
But yeah, it's 40 some years old, that camper. So it needed some help. We rescued it, renovated it, redeemed it, and kind of made it our own. It's a prairie schooner, they call it. So we go out on adventures. Hey, you're thing. in the resurrection business, yeah, right? Amen. You know, so. Amen. So we went out for an adventure back in July and went up to see our son in Philadelphia, who's establishing his own life there. He's 24. And the real purpose of the visit was to visit with him spent some time with him and his girlfriend, but we also got the privilege of moving him from one apartment to another. And <laughs> the so, you know, got, I like how you say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah it was a good workout. You know, it was about 95 degrees out that day, but it was good. It was good. And we were glad to do it. So when that was all done, we took the time to kind of explore around Philadelphia. We spent some time in the usual places, Independence Hall and kind of downtown Philadelphia, which was interesting. But my wife is a huge fan of a website called Atlas Obscura. And on this website, Atlas Obscura, you find out all about the off the beaten path sites that you can go see. So things like you would probably imagine the giant ball of twine or the world's largest baseball or things like that. Well, outside Philadelphia, there's a cool little town called Doylestown. And she found there this castle, there's a castle in Doylestown, Pennsylvania, built by a man named Henry Mercer. So really interesting story. Go look it up. It's called Font Hill Castle. He was taken to Europe as a child and just enamored with the castles as a child, so decided he was going to build one and built it out of poured concrete, which is really interesting to learn about. But inside this castle, as we're touring the castle, we come into his library, which was vast. If you can imagine this room, two-story room, and there's the main floor where a huge fireplace is, and then there's ladders and steps going up to a balcony level with even more books up there. And I come around the corner and I'm standing in front of this fireplace and I'm six foot, four inches tall. And the mantle is about eye level with me. So it's a big fireplace. And up above the fireplace are these two words. And I had a couple of years of Latin when I was in school. So I recognize that they're Latin, but I'm not really sure what they mean. It says plus ultra, plus ultra. So I asked the curator, who's one of these guys, he's been there for 25 years giving tours of the house. It's not the first time he's been asked. Plus Ultra is the motto of Spain and has been since the 1500s. King Charles V uh, established that as the motto of Spain, and it means, translated to English, it means further beyond. Now, before Columbus went out on his adventure and exploration, the Pillars of Hercules were these two huge pillars on either side of the Strait of Gibraltar had the motto of Spain on them. And at the time, before Columbus went out on this journey of exploration, the motto was non terre plus ultra. So translated to English, that means no land further beyond. And a lot of people believed it. Right. Absolutely. Most people believed it. Right. There were very, very few that didn't believe that was true, that thought there was maybe something beyond there. So he goes out and then all this time later comes back with tales of the new world. And Charles V of Spain decides, you know, we're going to change the motto of our country now to plus ultra, further beyond. In other words, there's always more. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we got to learn all about that on our journey of exploration up through Philadelphia. It was fun. You know, I would just say that the Lord will give you a phrase like that Oh yeah, for the season that you're in right now, and he's speaking to you through that. Amen. I can remember one time I was sitting in a 757 in Washington National, and it's a fairly big airplane to get in and out of National. It's like landing on a postage stamp going in there. And I'm loading up the computers, and at the early 90s, this airplane was brand new, and it looked like the cockpit of the Starship Enterprise. It had the flat screens and the magenta colors and everything. And everybody wanted to kind of crank their neck up there and see that flight deck. It was the first airplane that went from the cockpit to the flight deck. So I'm loading up the computers. I turn around. Here's a guy looking in the doorway, an older guy. I didn't think anything of it. I went back. I finished loading up the computer. I turned around and he's still there. And so I said, hey, come on up. And so he comes up and he shakes my hand. He goes, wow, thank you for getting this airplane in and out of Washington National. You guys do an amazing job. And uh, it was Buzz Aldrin. Oh, my word. Oh, wow. 
it turns into a love fest because I'm looking at him <laughs> sure. like going, no, dude, you're the one who started this whole thing. I, I watched you. You know, I was there in 69, glued to my little black and white, and it was where I got my calling in life. And mm-hmm. so he signs this picture of him, and he writes on there, Ad Astra, Per Aspera. Mm. For years, I had no idea what it meant. And at the right time, I found the meaning of it, and it is through adversity to the stars. Oh, wow. And it's a story of my life, you know? If we were ever to have something on the tombstone, it would be Ad Astra Per Aspera, mm. the tragic yet beautiful life of Jeff Andrews, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, uh, you know, I, and so I want to tell you, the message was, hey, you know what? Here's a destination. It's the stars. But let me tell you how you're going to get there. You're going to get there through adversity. There are going to be things that are going to come against you, okay? Mm-hmm. I want you to persevere and overcome mm-hmm. those things because there's so much more. So when we say there's more, that does not come without a price. Matter of fact, it's the ultimate price. Matter of fact, if you have trials and tribulations that even seem too much for you right now, I want to tell you, you're chosen for this journey. That's the Father's affirmation to go, oh yeah, you're going to press through this, and there is more. And when you get on the other side, you are then going to become that ranger that can help other people stuck on the other side of the mountain range, not knowing how to get through this trial and tribulation, and you're going to be the one calling them up. Amen. Amen. All right. I don't want to be left out of the Latin conversation now. So (laughs) I've got to take a swing, but back to exploration and the purpose of this podcast series, you know, it's for understanding, it's for reality, it's for seeing something that somehow wasn't known a moment ago. And what's the next thing progressively? And I think we have to get our arms around, you know, what's God doing? What's he really doing? What kind of story are we in? Where is it progressing? And we have this invitation to then see our lives in light of that, the larger story. Oh, yeah. And that there's so many places that need to be seen and understood and all these ingredients that we're talking about. But I think about, you know, the experiential invitation of knowing God, having the opportunity to see and hear your life in that context. And so... If what God is doing is moving this story, not to an end, but rather to the new beginning, and that we're all progressing to this place of what we would describe within Zoe as restoration, all things new. There was the garden, there was the fall, so we we lose the garden. Revelation is really clear, 19, 20, 21, 22. We're going to get the garden back. Yeah. And we're going to rule, reign with him forever, rule and reign with him together. So our original job description is going to be restored. And this is preparation for that. And that was just a few minutes of headlines of where this is going. And if mostly what God is doing, this is a quote I have from Dallas Willard, if mostly what God is doing is looking for good men in whom to entrust his power and authority, women too, if he's looking for men and women who he can entrust his power and authority, that gives you a context of why it's important to discover, why it's important to push into yeah. the exploration of who you are. So I'm now I'm, that's all set up for my Latin. And a lot of people are pretty excited about their heritage, their history. They want to know their family trees. They want to know from where they've come in hopes that it can give them a sense of who they are and where yeah. this tradition can go. Yeah and maybe right some wrongs or maybe solve yeah. some, some issues. So anyway, the Thompson family crest, here's my Latin. No se tipsum, know thyself. And I remember coming across that just curiosity. And I want to add that to our list. It's on our list now. I've written it down of exploration. There has to be curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. Another ingredient. Einstein said it's actually more important than knowledge is curiosity. Well, sure. I love being in the company of Einstein. You're right. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good mark for, a, for anybody. Yeah. And, I, and I have to say, no offense, Matt, it's rare that someone might say that. Yeah. <laughs> that's not true. So my friend Einstein and I say, yeah, yeah. you know. Our, my contemporary Einstein. But it's critical, Jeff, to exploration. It's critical to the Christian life. It's critical to the yeah. life that, oh, yeah. that God is offering us, that we live curiously and knowing that there's more to discover about ourselves, about God, about the kingdom, about how it works, 
And that's what's going on. The invitation. That's how we ended our last is. series talking about being curious, living curiously, and that leads to freedom, right? So, oh, in the freedom series, yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's all tied together. So Jay Leno takes the mic out onto the sidewalk and he starts talking to people, and he says to him, "Who fought in the Civil War?" Blank stare. Wow. When was the War of 1812? <laughs> Where was the Vietnam War fought? And these people have no idea. Wow. And as a historian, I don't laugh at that, actually. Yeah. I'm sad because they don't know what story they're living in. Right. They they're don't complete, know the they're story. They're disoriented. They're disoriented, mm -hmm. okay? And when you're disoriented, actually, you're dangerous. And so this idea of orientation not only brings you wholeness, but brings wholeness to others around you. When I walk into a bookstore, which direction do I go? I go to books, movies, I go to anything that will help me to understand the story I'm living in. It's unfolding. I'm learning all the time about this story. This latest trip I took to Cape Canaveral, I learned about my story. Yeah, talk about that, because that was a big trip. You well, had some, you had some company. So, let's, so let's, take, let's take a quick break. Oh, yeah, you're always good with the time, man. Thank and you. Then, and then when we come back, Jeff, yeah, definitely talk about the Cape. Okay. okay. We'll be right back. Hey, Exploring More podcast listeners, this is SJ. just want to take a second and invite you to one of our upcoming events. The Heart of a Warrior Encounter West is taking place Thursday, September 12th through Sunday, September 15th at Young Life's Trail West Camp in Buena Vista, Colorado. During the weekend, we have three main objectives. We want to help a man get his heart back, teach him how to fight, and show him where the battles are. To see Christ come for a man's heart and what God is up to in validating a man, initiating him, and calling him into the larger story is truly a glorious thing. It's a fierce journey for every man, but one that desperately needs to be taken. I personally have enjoyed more than a dozen of these Heart of a Warrior weekends, and God keeps coming back again and again for my heart and showing me more and more areas that he wants to come into and redeem and restore. Again, it's September 12th through the 15th in Buena Vista, Colorado. Visit zoe.org forward slash events, zoe.org forward slash events for more information. And I hope to see you out there in Colorado. Welcome back to the Exploring More podcast. We're here with Jeff Andreessen and SJ, and we're exploring. We're talking about exploration. Yep. We're all over the place, actually, because it's just such a huge subject. Last series about freedom. You know, I feel like, SJ, we could talk about this. It's a critical reality of kingdom men and women mm -hmm. that we're not settlers. We're pilgrims. We're pioneers. We're explorers. We're adventurers. And that is the identity that we need to take on mm -hmm. if we're going to live in the kingdom well. Yeah. There's just too much going on in the kingdom to be domesticated. I thought Tom's description of freedom in the body, flesh, and the freedom in the spirit and what the difference was, was brilliant. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You talked about in an earlier segment about a lot of adventure for you had some solitude to it. Yeah. I shared a little bit about how it was a bit dual for me. You know, I could go on my own, mm -hmm. but I also enjoyed so much having somebody with me. As a matter of fact, this trip to London that we went on, there were a couple things that Robin and Abby didn't want to do, and I just didn't want to do them by myself. Mm -hmm. you know, there I am looking at Churchill's... Bunkers. Bunkers, yeah. And the war room is what it's called. Mm -hmm. And I just didn't want to go spend the two hours walking around by myself in there with a bunch of people. So having adventure together is also a, oh, a critical a element. I'm not sure where I'm going to say it's and, an And ingredient. that's so kingdomly minded, you yeah. know, that it's not the rugged individual taking the hill, but there's a corporate adventure. Yeah. When you dial back to Jesus's life and you look in the gospels, he invited these men yeah. into an adventure. They had no idea. Oh yeah. Well, when he went into solitude... When he went into solitude, it was preparatory. Much. So much of the time that he would do that. Yeah. And I think that's probably meant to be true for us, too. It's not a retreat. That's why we don't call the Heart of a Warrior encounter a retreat, a anymore, retreat right? right? Our weekends that we do, they're not retreats. It's, they're missions. Uh, you're not giving up ground. You're, <laughs> you're going you're really, You mm -hmm. might spend some time in solitude and one-on-one -on -one with the Father so that then 
you're ready to go out and explore more, explore yeah. further, explore deeper. Yeah, there's movement in exploration for sure, Jeff. That's what I would say is an ingredient. And you can be under a tree and moving. You sure. know, you can be sitting on a rocking chair and stationary. So there's solitude, but yet the Father's taking you on an adventure, on an exploration, maybe of your history, but maybe of your current reality, slowing down enough to ask a few questions. God, where <laughs> yeah. are we? What is going on? It and, makes and me listening. think of Jonah. And whether or not you believe that Jonah actually spent the time he did in the belly of, of a fish or a whale, that's fine. But I'm thinking specifically of him sitting under a tree, wishing himself dead <laughs> rather than go share you know, <laughs> the yeah. truth of God with the Ninevites. And he's there and God's taking him on a journey, even though he's sitting there under a tree. Reluctantly. Mm, right, Very right. Reluctantly. <laughs> this yeah. wasn't his choice. Yeah, we're going to yeah. hand it back to you, Jeff. Yeah, we left right. with a little bit of the yeah. uh, Cape Canaveral introduction, and, and I want you to share a little bit about that. that As we talk about game. exploration, I'm really glad you brought up Jesus and the disciples, because maybe I've redeemed too much of my boyhood, but the way I look at the gospel is Jesus taking 12 guys on a high adventure camping trip for three years. These guys had no idea what was going to come next. And I think when Jesus shows up on the scene with all these Sadducees and Pharisees, he's there to say, hey, guess what? There's more. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. Yeah. And it was an adventure from there. So <laughs> yeah. can you imagine being in a synagogue on Sunday and some guy stands up with a withered arm? And then you as a disciple see this and you go, oh man, no, oh Jesus, oh no, don't, don't, don't heal him. Oh, 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 because you know you're not going to be sitting at somebody's dinner table that night. You're going to be out in the fields having been chased out of town right. uh, because Jesus healed him, you know? And so this was a high adventure. And these guys literally, you know, like when God called Abraham, you know, he came from the established, from the known, and he's now going to walk out into the unknown, and God robs him of predictability. This is what the adventure does. It robs us of predictability. We're not quite sure. You've never been here before. And this is the journey that we're on. As we were at the table last night sharing stories, I want to talk a little bit about my experience going to Cape Canaveral recently. And as a lifelong learner, I would say the way I go about my life is I read about it, I watch it, and I go there. So I watched the series by Ron Howard and Tom Hanks called From the Earth to the Moon. And it's about the Apollo space program. And then I read a book called American Moonshot, and it was the 50th anniversary of the Kennedy space exploration and, of course, landing on the moon. And then I actually went to Cape Canaveral. And I find that if I build a domain knowledge on a particular subject, Father will often come in and speak as I do that. As I put that effort in to learn and to take a deep dive he's able to have more resources to be able to use and to speak. And I want to go back for a second before I talk about Cape Canaveral. And I think Gary Barkalow would love this because the quote is from the book, American Moonshot, artists are often decades ahead of engineers and scientists. And the perfect example is Jules Verne. In 1865, he wrote a book called From the Earth to the Moon that this series is based on. And in the book, he predicts in 1865 that America is going to beat Russia, Germany, France, and England to the moon. Wow. That's extraordinary. That we're most likely going to launch- A hundred years ti- before. <laughs> we're most likely going to launch from the tidal waters of Florida, and it's going to take us four days to get to the moon. What? And in actuality, it took us three. Wow. Okay. Now, what's the significance of that? Well, guess who grows up in the early 19th, uh, you know, maybe 50 years later, guess who's growing up reading these books and eating them up, but John F. Kennedy, Mm. all right? So he's reading this stuff. Okay, let's fast forward a little bit. Let's go to Germany. And during World War II, there was a rocket man. His name was Werner von Braun, and he wants to build rockets that could go into space. And he gets his opportunity, unfortunately, from Hitler, who sees these rockets in its deleterious effects. Von Braun's got now the opportunity, builds these V2 rockets that can then hit actually London. So he's got his chance to do that, but Hitler sees the opportunity to build rockets that would go further and higher, and what he wants to do is he wants these rockets to be launched at Boston, New York, and Washington. 
Hitler wants to see those cities burn like his cities are burning from the Allied bombings, Mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Well, we know the rest of the story. The boys march across France after D-Day, and they come into Germany, and the war's coming to an end, and von Braun knows exactly what's going on, and he takes his technology and he runs to the Americans. He doesn't want to run to the Russians. He doesn't want to go there. And he runs and we embrace him and we take him to the United States. The problem when he comes over here is Eisenhower then becomes president. Eisenhower doesn't particularly trust von Braun being an SS, former SS, and he doesn't see the importance of going to space. But when von Braun meets Kennedy, oh my gosh, everything changes and he finds his partner. And so when Kennedy becomes president, he then puts von Braun over the entire space program, and it's von Braun who then takes us eventually to the moon. So if anybody understands the American dream, it would be von Braun, okay? And this was the beauty of the book, Michael. You bring out the point that Paul was really the church's worst enemy. He pursued them to the point of imprisonment and, or death and then becomes its greatest advocate. The spiritual theory here is, is that the very worst things in our life have the possibility of becoming the very best things in life. What could be worse than the killing of God? But when they crucified him, it became the salvation of the world. And this spiritual concept is hard for us because we hate pain, but sometimes it comes to deliver us and to bring us to new heights. Yeah. Von Braun has a great story. He converted to Christianity. On his tombstone, he writes that the heavens, the firmaments of the heavens declare the glory of God. A great story there. But the problem was when Kennedy got shot. Here's Werner von Braun, engineer, scientist, very reserved man. When Kennedy is shot, he's destroyed. He just breaks down and he openly weeps. And he goes out. And when none of the scientists are looking, they were just about to launch Saturn I. He inscribes JFK's initials on there, JFK. So JFK made it in a sense. There's a little Mm -hmm. resurrection in that particular story. But I really want to go back to that. And I want to say from experience that, again, the very worst things that happen in your life have the possibility, not always, they have the possibility of becoming the very best things. And so many of the tragedies let me into a new exploration into the goodness of God. Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah, I immediately go to, there's a cost to exploration, SJ. Sure. Oh, yeah. There's a cost associated with... Everything. (laughs) It's going to cost you everything. There's a bit of irony, Jeff, because there's a cost of not. It actually costs more not to take the journey. Amen. Thank you for affirming that. Just hearing you talk about the journey that we're on and the importance of the exploration. I think somebody who's journeying and not paying attention is probably the difference between trying to get through the day rather than understanding what the days are mounting for Mm -hmm. something. You know, an explorer and somebody who understands that that's the position God wants you in Mm -hmm. and needs you to be in so that you can discover the truths about the kingdom and yourself and about him. And it's just a larger story. It's a larger role and it's a larger space to take up and take on. So I'm exhorted and encouraged to step into those shoes again and again and again. And I hope our listeners are too, that the life of a kingdom man or a kingdom woman is one of exploration and experiencing. I like what you said, Jeff, this rhythm that you had, that you've researched something, you've watched something about that, and then you've gone to that place to discover it for yourself. And it takes me back to Bagger. In the scene where Legend of Bagger Le- Vance, Le- yeah. yeah, the film mm-hmm. The Legend of Bagger Vance, and they're on the tee box, right, mm-hmm. with Bobby Jones and Walter Hagen, and it's not going very well. And what Bagger wants to do for Juna, his player, is he wants to give him something, but Juna's going to have to let go of something, right, in order to get these eyes that are needed to play this game. And it's a beautiful metaphor, tremendous story in film. And what he does is the same thing. Is my point, Jeff? Bagger says to Juna in this reality, he provokes him. Well, go ahead. Keep on swinging the way you're swinging and keep on playing the way you're playing. If that's that's, working for you, if that's where you want to settle, then go ahead. But if you want to see the field, if you want to step into a different way, just let me know. So Juna, about a 10 second delay and he comes back. Okay. What's the field? 
So he provokes him with the question. June is interested now. And then Bagger says, fix your eyes on Bobby Jones. He shows him what it looks like. We're told to fix yeah. our eyes upon Jesus. Fix our eyes on Jesus. What does it look like? Yeah. And Amen. then we're invited, okay, now it's your turn at the tee box. Yes. And I want yeah. you to now emulate that. And that moment, Juna changes in that moment. Sure. The game changes in that moment. He's got new eyes. And he sees the game differently and he's starting to play it differently. It's what we're talking about. One of the highlights from the book was, if a wounded heart can wound, then a free heart can set hearts free. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Well, guys, let's circle the airport one more time, okay. right? We've come down in and we're going to go a couple more rounds probably talking about exploration, but let's land or not land, yep. but <laughs> bring yeah. this one Lay in. Down. Yeah. Okay. Refuel okay. for another and time. And we're going to refuel for our next episode. Can I leave it with a quote here? Yeah. We live in a great story in this country because we have so many people who went first. And one of them was, of course, Lindbergh. And when he landed in Paris, he became the most famous person in the world. And everyone had to write something about him. And F. Scott Fitzgerald wrote, a young Minnesotan who seemed to have nothing to do with this generation did a heroic thing. And for a moment, people set down their glasses in the country clubs and the speakeasies and thought of their old best dreams. Wow. And there's this beautiful idea that as you explore and you go out and you look at the possibility of as you explore this world, that there's a new world to come, it inspires those around you. And it moves us out of our addictions and our easiness and asks us to take courage to go ahead and explore ourselves. Man, that is great. I love the inspirational aspect of that. You know, it's not just for him and celebrating him, but it's inspirational to others. His, oh, his very efforts. much so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a quote that I think it's Morgan Snyder from Ransom Heart that I heard that Every generation has to discover the gospel for themselves. Yeah. Right. And they're reminded from those who've preceded them what yeah. they're looking for, mm -hmm. what they're exploring for. What I love about that is you're going to have to experience it for yourself. You're going to have to read about it. You're going to have to see somebody that it looks like. Yeah. And then you're going to go need to find it yeah. for yourself mm -hmm. so that you can one day own it. You can write about it. You yeah. can tell stories of the goodness of God. And so every generation has to discover the gospel for themselves. It's not that we're not doing it right or we're losing ground. Yeah, I'm not saying that there's not some of that in this progression of the story. But if Morgan's right, then that's the reality. Our kids have to discover the gospel mm -hmm. for themselves. And they're looking at us. We have to let them. Oh, they are watching us. What was that quote you okay, mentioned? Okay, so Tom Waits in Men's Journal was asked about children, and he said, kids, they don't listen to a word of advice you give them, but they do watch the way you live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So when we get back, I want to ask you, who did you see it in? Who was your hero? Sure. Where did you first see it? Yeah. All right. Well, Sounds good. Yeah. Thanks for being with us for this session of the Exploring More podcast. If you want to reach out to us, if you want to connect with us, then you can go to the email address, Zoe, was it forward slash? <laughs> I always get the slash yeah. wrong. Let me share that uh, email you. address. It's exploringmore More. at zoe.org. And then our uh, website. website is zoe.org forward slash podcast. Just We'd there. love to hear from you. We'd love to hear about your stories of adventure. Love to hear about what God's showing you about you, about him, about the larger story. Until next time, when we talk some more on Exploring More, we'll look forward to connecting with you again. We hope you have enjoyed this episode of Exploring More. The landing page for this podcast is zoe.org forward slash podcast. That's Z-O-W-E-H dot org forward slash podcast, where you can find the show notes and various platforms to which we broadcast. You can also find us and the life of more by visiting Zoe on Uversion Bible app, Right Now Media, our Facebook page, and Zoe on Instagram and Twitter. Remember, with God there is always more, and you were made for more. Mm -hmm.